Hi all, today I'm happy to have Pats, the co-founder and managing partner at Panerai Ventures. Thank you so much for coming, Pats. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, please tell us, how have you first became interested in crypto? So basically, uh, in uh, 2015, uh, 2014, during that time, uh, I started trading basically with the Bitcoin, Ethereum. And uh, so uh, later I started uh, understanding, okay, uh, the trading continues. After some time, then I got the curiosity, like, uh, how does the technology work behind this? So what is so differentiated from the uh, traditional stock market to this? That is where I, I got into brief into the blockchain, Web3. Oh, okay, this is the, how the ecosystem will be there. You can build upon something. It's not only just tokens and crypto trading. That is where the journey started. And uh, so in previous firm, I was uh, working as an AVP and then I co-founded one more my venture as well. And we have our own fund as well. And uh, our basically Panera Ventures in an early stage VC and a venture builder. And uh, we are also working on like uh, uh, RWA, ZK and Infra projects. And as of now, we are working on 10 plus projects. And uh, so, yeah, uh, that's a short brief. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I know that you are interested in real world assets. Could you please yes. give some examples of hmm. um, yeah of traditional financial assets that can be transferred uh, and represented by digital tokens and why? Yes. Are you interested in them? See, basically, uh, real world assets is ultimately is one thing uh, which you can uh, physically, it is available in the physical world, right? For example, like real estate or uh, for example, if you are having a shares in a public traded companies, you can have equities or any fixed income securities or any commodities. So all these things can be uh, tokenized, basically any art or collectibles or uh, and other lot of options will be available. May maybe some venture capital investments also you can have a, you can make a tokenized and you can provide liquidity and access to early stage investment opportunities as well. So uh, that's what I thought. Like I um, mean, RW is one of the booming, and we presently we are working on one aviation industry project as well. We are uh, getting into aviation industry as well uh, in the RW as well, and we are working on one more real estate project as well. So we are uh, very much uh, deeply connected with the RW ecosystem. So uh, that's where I thought like uh, it will really make a lot of difference uh, coming to the traditional finance in in terms of lot of aspects. Yeah, thank you. That's very interesting. And uh, how uh, could you please yeah explain the difference uh, between the RWA and uh, the traditional cryptocurrency? Yeah, see, RWA and uh, cryptocurrencies are, uh, are different in various aspects, basically, right? Like uh, there are like uh, basically in the underlying assets, uh, like for example, in uh, real world, you will have a ownership or rights, and that will be like purpose. Why you want to digitize the tokenize the um, certain uh, object? And of course, there will be like regulatory frameworks will be there and a lot of aspect, uh, aspects will be there. And of course, there will be value propositions will be there for that as well. Okay. So, but when it comes to cryptocurrencies, it offers that offers a certain other value propositions. Like, for example, like decentralization of, uh, um, of I mean, uh, token, I mean, basically and uh, borderless transaction and uh, programmability and you are building dApps upon them. So that's a other, other sector. So there's the two difference uh, which will happen basically and you'll be it will be used in the payment system and a lot of uh, it has entirely changed the scenario of the payment payments right basically in the DeFi sector and everything so that's what uh, that's what I think will be the major difference between the RW and uh, cryptocurrencies so that's what yeah thank you as an and uh, as an investor could you please also explain um, what are the benefits of investing in RWA? So basically, you will be getting access to the traditional assets, for example, like uh, real estate, commodities, equities or uh, any debt instruments or uh, so you can diversify the portfolio, you will get access to all these traditional assets as well. Apart from that, you will be one of the fractional ownership, you will be having a fractional ownership in that aspect as well, right? Uh, for example, any high value assets, for example, in real estate, you can own each part of that uh, using the fractional ownership and you will be having that enhanced liquidity and you will be having that 24 7 market access and due to the, through the blockchain uh, sector, there will be like transparency and security also will be available, right? And of course, it will be cost efficiency and a lot of other aspects will be coming. And when it comes to uh, real world assets, uh, you will be having access to the global market access basically and of course uh, we'll be looking into uh, compliance and regulation as well so and uh, so we can look into these aspects as well uh, when it comes to uh, um, benefits of the real world assets and it will be like the yields what you're getting in the real world assets is the revenue generated from the real world assets only right so that's the yield what we're getting is uh, really generated from the 
actual real world asset which is physically present in the world so that's where i think it will be it will be making a lot of difference uh, so by investing it will be having a lot of advantages as well for a person on a long term in terms of financial security as well so that what make a lot of uh, difference and it's a uh, benefits what we are getting uh, by investing in real world asset tokens okay okay thank you yeah uh, understood and uh, what are some factors that investors should consider when evaluating uh, the potential of rwa token investments see uh, one is the uh, what is the uh, underlying asset quality right so what's the uh, quality of the asset basically that way mainly works up for us what's the condition what's the present value of that and what's the issue of reputation the person who is listing that rwa uh, asset in the marketplace we should su- look into his issue of reputation and his credibility as well okay and then we'll be looking into the his token structure and what are the rights we'll be getting so what is the benefits we'll be getting and uh, what are the uh, token structure and how is the token structure uh, overall planned and then we'll be looking into the market market demand basically what's the demand we get in the market and what's the liquidity and everything and then we'll look into the trends market conditions trends and of course we'll be looking into the risk factors as well we'll be looking into uh, risk factors and of course we'll be looking into the projections performance and all these aspects also we'll be looking into that so basically i think uh, it will uh, these are things which we feel like uh, mainly it will have a lot of importance when it comes to the uh, i mean uh, they should investors should consider basically so that's what i feel like it will make a lot of difference and of course ultimately the regulatory and uh, legal compliance also will matter because uh, the real world uh, physical world there will be certain regulations right for example in dubai there is a certain other regulations when it comes to real world assets in india there is separate regulations in singapore there will be other regulations so we should take in you should take care of these uh, regulations as well now of course at the end of the day we have to look into exit options how how at the end ultimately an investor will look in how i can make 10x or 5x in by uh, investing in this uh, real world asset so we have to look into these aspects as well we have to look into exit options and he has to look into the liquidity events so uh, what's the exit strategy and all these aspects he has to look into that so these are the main things which we uh, which investor should look into while uh, investing in rwa so these are the which things which we really look into that okay thanks yeah but uh, because of the this legal and regulation problems uh, so it like limits the potential investment right because you are looking for investments in like your area where you are uh, aware of of the rules and everything yeah yes 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 so basically so that's what you should know your the uh, the weather region wise security laws you should be knowing and of course you should be doing the kyc and of course the uh, aml regulations will be there basically anti money laundering regulations and all these aspects we have to consider that and we have to respect that basically and we have to take that into consideration and we have to look into the taxation part and what's the cross border regulations and all these aspects we have to take into consideration and uh, i think that will make a lot of uh, of course legal documentation and contracts will be required and uh, so i mean basically the regulatory compliance of the issuer and the buyer so all these will be taken into consideration basically so that will be uh, will be a very important uh, important aspect yeah yeah thank you and also people say that sometimes the valuation of uh, hmm. rwa uh may not reflect the real value of the asset yes uh, yes yeah. Uh, so yeah this is this is the usually ha- happens in the market for example uh, for example there will be certain hesitation right for example whenever ultimately as an investor there will be uh, initial they will, will be looking into certain uh, hesitation okay it's a new trend so whether my uh, investment will be 5x or it will be minus so it will be plus or minus ultimately right so basically in that aspect first we'll be looking into first independent valuation you have to do you have to look in from your perspective you have to take into the market consideration and all this you have to do the independent valuation then you have to look into documentation and disclosure and then of course we have a lot of third party verification also available you know a lot of like audits will be available and you have to look into regulatory oversight and i think if you have get the transparency in the tokenization process that will be well and good and of course it will be you have to look into the market risk pricing of course the market uh, due to inflation and everything lot of market uh, based pricing will be deferred right so these aspect also we have to uh, take into consideration of course then 
um regular uh, um, i mean regularly we have to monitor that and we have to report that uh, what's the asset value and everything so if we take these aspects into consideration i think um, we can overcome that issue we can uh, we'll be able to i mean everything will be not accurate right at least if you are able to get 90% accuracy or something uh, to that accuracy level then we will be in a safer position when it comes to the investment part so that's what i feel and of course uh, there will be certain uh, investors should be educated like what are the requirements of this and um, so whether there will be risk associated with this or not so this factor should be taken into consideration so if he is educated about all these aspects then um, we will be able to uh, overcome that uh, certain issues and we will be able to take care of that so that's the point yeah thank you for such an informative answer yeah that's very interesting and uh, yeah speaking about uh, speaking, speaking about projects what are you like top 3 criteria for a project to have so you would invest um it so, may not be the like uh, real world assets project but yeah any crypto project hmm. so basically uh, one thing we'll look into this uh, the team uh, the founding team so what their vision and what their like Uh, how after five years, how they uh, where the uh, company should be after of the ten years, whether they want to be a unicorn or the de- decacorn, or what's the plan, what's their vision, or they want to get acquired by someone. So these are things we'll be looking into the the psychologically we'll look into the founding team first of all. Uh, then of course we'll be looking into the product. So uh, how what's the product? Is it market fit and uh, as a, it's, it, it will be able to generate revenue and uh, what's the revenue strategy they are following and how they will be able to take the marketing. and all these aspects also will take into consideration right and of course uh, third part we'll be looking into the due diligence part and uh, so is there any like glitch in the project or the smart contracts and how does it work and everything so these three aspects i think it will be very important uh, aspects when it comes to the project uh, criteria and of course rwa when it comes to like we are we will be bringing aviation in the aviation industry to the rwa as well So we are uh, tying up with one of the uh, chopper company. Uh, chopper, they have fleet of helicopters, and we'll be tokenizing that. I um, mean, I uh, mean, um, aviation industry as well. We'll be uh, looking. Into, we'll be tokenizing that choppers as well. And uh, so these are the unique aspects uh, which we'll be looking into. So when you have the unique uh, USP in certain project where you can, you'll be able to onboard maximum customers. I mean, users onboard. that is where uh, that project will really make a difference so nowadays what happens is like you will be able to get the partnership and all the things will happen but ultimately you will fail in getting the revenue strategy so how will you able to generate revenue so you will be raising the fund fund will be raised after one year two year at third year uh, where you will be at one point you have to do the revenue stream right you have to get the revenue stream sorted so that is where uh, the criteria will be required so these are revenue stream strategy is one of the main criteria which we also look into that so that will make a lot of uh, uh, difference basically that's the point yeah thank you and could you please also name the most common mistakes that founder founders make yes so see one thing is like uh, sometimes the founders will be hurrying launching the token and uh, so of course they want to uh, launch the token and uh, make it accessible so but see every time launching the token is one aspect but uh, so in the, at the same time they also have to have a solid plan what's the revenue strategy they are planning what kind of strategic partnerships they should be having how they will be uh, showcasing the company whether it should be like a uh, like a normal project or they should be like a billion dollar company so they should, how they showcasing showcasing themselves to the people so that is also matters so whether they should be looking like what's the tam basically the total addressable market what we see right so what's the total addressable market if the market is small and if you are building a very big product and you will not be able to onboard customers there is no point in that so you should look into the tam as well and so and we have to do the spot analysis basically the strength weakness opportunity and threat this is the spot analysis we usually do right so these are things that founders should uh, should have to do initially and they have to get thorough in that once they get that confidence they can take it forward so these are the mistakes they should not do so uh, they should consider all these things and then they can take it forward in that aspect they can avoid these kind of mistakes uh, like uh, randomly going to token listing and all these aspects so they can take it forward like for yeah thank you fats totally agree and um, yeah what do you think what excites you more about the future of blockchain and web3 in general yeah so basically the first of of course like the tokenization of assets so i'm always a, a rwa guy so that's what i mean so of course there will be defi the, how the after the crypto came the how the defi payments uh, as transformed 
So, for example, you, um, recently you you will be able to see right. There's a whale, whale transaction happened in BTC. So literally, he uh, a person will be able to send billion dollars worth of Bitcoin with a general fees of like one to two dollar. Imagine if a normal traditional bank sending that same amount, it will take literally two to three days, and the fees will be much higher. So that's the point. So that the evolution from the normal traditional finance and um, uh, payment transaction to the Uh, through the crypto transaction has evolved a lot so this is one of the major uh, main of uh, i mean useful and of course you have a, a nfts will be there you, it's a, you can have a you can re- nfts can represent a unique digital assets and collectibles in blockchain right and of course the transparency will be there and of course the decentralization and more than that like that privacy and security also will be there uh, that's what the in these are things which make the web3 like uh, sound um, better and it's a uh, for on long term Of course, there will be like governance of DAOs, and um, so of course, DAO is one of the very important aspect uh, which came in Web three. So governance DAOs also which will be very important. So these are the which these are things which will be holding very importance, and it has immense potential to transform industries, empower individuals, and everything in future, and can reshape the entire way, way where we interact and do the transaction, or uh, in, it will make a very big uh, I mean uh, impact in the digital economy as well, basically. so these are the very important things which will be so basically these are the real world um, and utilities which will be used right so ultimately if you are solving the real world problems ultimately using blockchain that's a that is what excites you the excites you the most ultimately right so that's what uh, matters a lot so that's what okay thank you yes thank you so much pass for your time it was such a pleasure talking to you sure 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 thank you so much thank you so much thank you